Hey all, Baruch Levy B here from Defiant Spirit. I'm going to take a different direction today. Oftentimes I'll talk about um, Viktor Frankl, meaning, purpose, resilience in our lives, the Enneagram, my work with men and man uprising. But today I want to talk about Passover, the Jewish holy days that as I'm recording this begins tonight and continues on for eight nights. And I'm putting back on the rabbi hat. Now, I don't take this hat out very often anymore. I retired as a rabbi. don't really identify with it as a profession. Still a Jew, still um, a, a Israeli, American, dual citizenship, and love both. But it's not what I do professionally. It's um, really not the focal point of my life, even personally. I, um, however, once in a while have to take it back out when I see that the world needs me to take it out, just like they need other people to, to take out their identities and advocacy and um, justice and yeah Jewish professionals need to come out of the cracks the woodwork when the Jewish people are being threatened and the state of Israel the Jewish homeland is being threatened and it is being threatened I mean make no mistake about it as I'm recording this right now on the campus of uh, Columbia University in New York there is now what's considered sort of a makeshift refugee camp for people who call themselves um, Israel protesters or pro-Palestinian supporters, but that's not what it is anymore. You know, what started out as pro-Palestinian protests or rallies, anti-Israel rallies, has now grown into Jew Hatred 101. Anybody out there who thinks that they're protesting on behalf of the Palestinians, that, that ship sailed, right? It is quite clear. Intentions have been made very clear when people say they want you dead we need to start believing them when you hear chants of from the river to the sea that's not a cute little rhyme out there a slogan to get people all um, you know fired up to, to be pro-palestinian that's a call for the annihilation for the extermination of jews we went from pro-palestinian to pro-hamas make no mistake about it hamas is a terrorist organization on every level. Then we went to pro Hezbollah and pro Iran, pro Muslim Brotherhood, pro Houthis. These are the terrorists of the world today. And from there we go to gas the Jews, as I've heard called down in Sydney, Australia, or death to Israel, which is tantamount to saying death to Jews, since there is one Jewish homeland and there's 32, 22 Muslim um countries and there's something like 50 Arab countries and there's one Jewish country the size of New Jersey the population of greater Los Angeles and yet that's the one that students on Columbia are so concerned about the only democracy in the Middle East the only place where if you are gay and you're here in America you might want to go check out Israel I would caution you to steer clear of the Gaza Strip because in the Gaza Strip you will be thrown off the nearest building if you're gay or if you're a woman who's showing her body, walking in you know, bikinis down in uh, Fort Lauderdale, if you try that in the Gaza Strip, it's not going to turn out for you so well. But there is a place that it'll turn out, and you'll be quite at home. And that is Israel proper. That is Tel Aviv, Jerusalem, where you will be celebrated for your alternative lifestyle. There's many people there who are on the fringes and totally accepted. Israel is a country of Jews, Muslims, and Arabs who get along famously. I'm not talking about in the Gaza Strip or the West Bank. I'm talking about Israel proper, where two million of its eight million citizens are Israeli Arabs, and ask them. Polls have been done. Is there anywhere else in the Middle East, including Gaza, the West Bank, that you would rather live? Unequivocally, hands down, no. Those two million Arabs, some Christian, some Muslim, are equal citizens. They uh, sit on the Supreme Court. When I lived there, they were my pharmacists, uh, they were my doctors, they were in mainstream society. By definition, it's not an apartheid state. Now what's happening in Gaza is an atrocity, and it is. And we should hold those who are accountable of this atrocity accountable. But that happens to be Hamas. The Jews I know, the Israelis I know, want peace. They long for peace. They pine for peace. They were ready to give away 95 to 99 percent of what these uh, Palestinians were asking for over the past 75 years in five different opportunities and it was rejected each and every time. As the old saying goes, if Palestinians would put down their weapons today, 
or Hamas would put down their weapons today, there would be peace tomorrow. But do you know what would happen if Israelis put down their weapons today? There would be no Israel. Why? Because students at Columbia are calling for a genocide of the Jewish people. People around the world now are joining in with these chants. People, by the way, who don't care about Palestinians. Most of those kids at Columbia, most of the people I hear about who are so pro-Palestinian, they couldn't find Gaza on a map. They don't know where Israel is. They've never actually been interested in any of the causes until it's now a cause celeb when they believe they're fighting for the underdog in the Palestinian people. Well, guess what? The true underdog in all of this is the state of Israel. Yes, it just fended off um, 300 missiles shot from Iran. Yes, we have Iron Dome. Yes, we have some of the greatest defenses in the world. But do you know what? We are one tiny country in a hostile region where we are oftentimes left to our own devices to fend for ourselves. And talk about an underdog. We shouldn't be here. We, it's against all odds that we are here. And yet the state of Israel is here and it's a flourishing democracy. You don't like what they stand for. You don't like Bibi Netanyahu. Great. Get in line. So many of the Israelis I know don't like Bibi or don't like some of the um, social challenges that are going on, their government policies. And that's why it's a democracy and they have the right to vote. But who are we to tell them how to vote? We have a hard enough time running our own country, let alone running somebody else's. The state of Israel is a democracy and continues to be a democracy in spite of every reason to um, go in a different direction because they are constantly being threatened by their neighbors, constantly being brought to the brink of now their existence. This is an existential threat when Iran shoots 300 rockets at you and the world says, don't return fire. People around the world don't care about the Palestinians. They care about the Palestinians about as much as BLM cares about black people. BLM duped the world by saying they care about black people when in fact they care about black people as long as it's in the context of white people hurting black people, which is always wrong. But they haven't said peep about black people hurting black people and they've taken that money and they've done horrible things with it. Patrice Flowers and others at the BLM organization. Well, people have done the same thing with um, UNRWA, the United Nations Palestinian arm, where they have taken that money and they've done terrible things with it. And they've gotten rich over the money we send over there. And they built terror tunnels with the money we send over there. And again, people around the world aren't advocating for the Palestinians. They don't care about the Palestinians. Just be honest. I can handle honesty, but what I can't handle is deception and hiding behind this cause. I know so many people, again, who don't care about the Syrian casualty numbers or what's happening in Ukraine and, and Russian and Ukrainian casualty numbers and the Uyghurs in China and Sudan. And you pick your, um, your war, you pick your genocide, you're peep. You, you, you don't say peep. You're, you're silent. You're mute on the topic because in the end, it's just about Jew hatred. So let's just talk about that in the context of Passover. And I'm addressing this to the students at Columbia because, you know, you can hate us, you can want us dead, but you haven't really studied history on many levels. We know you haven't studied history, but how do I know you haven't studied history? Because every group that has tried to annihilate the Jewish people has come and has gone. The Egyptians wanted to destroy us, kill us, and the Egyptian empire has come and gone. The Amalekites, the Assyrians, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Chaldeans, the Persians, the Greek, the Romans, the Byzantine, the Ottoman Turks, the Soviet empire, the Nazis, they have all come, they have all gone. But in the words of Mark Twain, after visiting Israel in 1899, that's the Jew. What does he say? All things are mortal, but the Jew. All other forces pass, but he remains. What is the secret to his immortality, asked Mark Twain? I'll tell you what it is. It's what my teacher, Dr. Viktor Frankl, said that is in each and every one of us, and we can summons, we can draw upon, and it is called the defiant power of the human spirit. That is what the Jewish people have demonstrated collectively at each and every one of those junctures in human history. When the world has turned on us, when they have tried to annihilate us and destroy us, they have all come and gone. But we have found the defiant power of our individual spirit and our collective spirit. And that's why we're still here. I'm asked all the time, do I believe the Jews are chosen? I do believe the Jewish people are chosen. I do believe lots of people are chosen for different reasons. 
why we are chosen, that's the question. And we are chosen because we are here to teach the world what it means to be hated, what it means to not give way to hate, what it means to have every opportunity that the rest of the world is afforded taken away from us, and yet, not in spite of it, but because of it, we rise up even higher. Look at the state of Israel. The state of Israel is a miracle. It's a modern miracle. Again, it's a democracy. It is called the startup nation because of their disproportionate contribution to technology, world-changing, transforming technology, life-sustaining technologies, and medicines. Wildly disproportionate in their contribution to the world. You like to criticize Israel? Well, you're criticizing it while using their medicines and while you're using their smartphones and while using their technologies. Israel is the only, it's the only country in the world that has figured out a way to change um, in, a, in the face of an adapting climate. Did you know Israel is the only country that's independent of the climate for their water? They have the capability of literally generating water out of thin air. They have transformed that desert, that piece of nothing swampland that nobody wanted up until the Jews wanted it, and they've turned it into an oasis, a physical oasis, but also a figurative oasis of, again, women's rights and gay rights and civil rights and human rights. What is going on right now in Gaza is an atrocity, but it is an atrocity perpetuated by Hamas. When you're out there calling for a ceasefire, you might want to also add a call to release the Jewish men, women, and children who are still being host held hostage, probably murdered at this point, but nobody seems to be asking for that when you're calling for a ceasefire. Nobody seems to be calling for an accountability of Hamas and what they have done, the war crimes that they are accountable for. Nobody seems to be calling for Iran to um, and what they had just done to a free and sovereign nation, unprecedented in human history, launching 300 rockets. We seem to be pretty quiet on that. Why? We know why. Because to all the students at Columbia, you don't care about the Palestinians. You don't care about a two-state solution. You're chanting from the river to the sea. You want a one-state solution. And let's just be clear, that one-state solution has no place in it for Jews like me. So at least be honest about who you are and what you stand for. Take off your masks and be a man, be a woman. And if it's a worthy cause and just cause you believe you're fighting for, then don't hide your face. Come out from behind the, the rhetoric and the pretense that this is about Palestinians. It is not about Palestinians. It is about your hatred for the Jewish people and for Jews, not just in Israel, but wherever they find themselves, which is why the Jewish students on your campus and campuses all throughout the U.S. and through the world are now physically um, worried about their safety. It is why that um, we have to walk around your protests because we're not safe to go through them. Whereas if you go through a pro-Israel protest, you would be 100% unequivocally safe. The moment a Jewish student or an Israeli cause disrupts into violence, I as a rabbi will be the first one to condemn it, but it doesn't happen. Why? Because we are a peace-loving people, just like every Israeli I know would put down their weapons tomorrow if it would lead to peace. But they can't do that, and it breaks their heart. Golda Meir said, I can forgive the Palestinians for killing our children, but I can't forgive them for making us kill theirs. Well, guess what, my friends? Every Israeli I know feels the same way. As we go into the Passover holiday, we will commemorate the Israelites defeating the Egyptians, getting to the other side of the Red Sea and celebrating and condemned for that celebration. And ever since then, we have condemned Jews for celebrating. Even when they were the victims, even when they were victimized, we still don't celebrate the demise of our enemies because Jews are a peace loving people and the Jewish homeland, call it whatever you want, call it Israel, you can call it Zionism, it's still the Jewish homeland built on Jewish values and we will never ever celebrate the death of another human being, but we will do what we have to do to not only survive, but to thrive. And that is the gift of the Jewish people, that we have been not only surviving, but we have, against all odds, figured out the formula to thriving in a world that doesn't seem to want us back then, doesn't 
seem to want us now, and you're just proving the point. But let me prove to you one more point. They tried to kill us is what we say at every Jewish holiday, and we won is the message of every Jewish holiday. And then we say at the Passover Seder or Hanukkah or Purim, you name the holiday, now it's time to eat. And oftentimes it's thrown around as a joke. They tried to kill us. We won. Let's eat. But it's true. And it's more than just eating. It's more than just surviving. We will come out of this after Columbia and this after Harvard University and this after the Hamas squad in Congress and this after Iran and this after wherever anti-Semitism, Jew hatred rise, raises its ugly head. We will once again celebrate the holiday of Passover like we're celebrating tonight and next year and the year after that and the year after that because you can take this away from uh, my my. I would say friends, you're not friends, my enemies in uh, Colombia and wherever you find yourself, you have not found a way to annihilate, to eradicate the Jewish people. Every era you try and every era you fail. And those who bless the Jews are blessed by the Jews, by having us in your presence, by our support um, as a country, the Jewish homeland, and those who curse the Jews end up going the way of the Egyptians and Passover story, and of the Syrian Greeks and the Hanukkah story, and of uh, Haman and the Persians in the uh, Purim story, and the list goes on and on. And someday they'll be reading about Columbia University and Harvard University and the radical left in Congress and whoever you are, wherever you are, because you tried to kill us, but once again we'll win, and it's time to get ready for Passover. It's time to eat. If you are a supporter of Israel, of the Jewish people, please keep on going. There are more of you than the haters. We can't do this alone. This is not just about Judaism. This is about decency. In the words of Viktor Frankl, there are only two races. And I know a lot of people don't like this. It's the truth. There's the race of the decent and there's the race of the indecent. And you're on one side or you're on the other. And on this particular cause, at this time, there is no middle ground. You are either with us or you're against us. You are either decent or you're at Columbia University and you're indecent. And if you're with us, you have a spot at my Seder table, at any Jew Seder table in the state of Israel, because we are all in this together. Amachad Levachad. One people, one heart, as we say. Well, that one people expands out to our not non-Jewish brothers and sisters who continue to stand with us to do what's right, to make sure that there continues to be a Jewish homeland, one Jewish homeland, the state of Israel, and it will continue on forever because that's who we are. That's what we do. We are a people of the defiant power of the human spirit, and that's why we've been chosen, and that's what we will continue to inspire the world. So with that, have a meaningful Passover. To those of you fighting for uh, for the Jewish people and for the Jewish homeland, keep on fighting the good fight. And for those of you at Columbia University, enjoy it while it lasts because it ain't going to last much longer. You tried to kill us. We won. It's time to eat.